and welcome to this month's edition of Chats with the Chairman. I'm your host and chairman of the IICRC Board of Directors, Kevin Pearson. Today we've got a great show, one I've been waiting a long time for. And uh, But before we begin the show, I just want to let you know that if you have any questions today, feel free to go ahead and email me. Uh, at kpearson at iicrcnet.org. That's my email address. I'll be happy to get uh, get back to you after the show with any questions that we don't answer on the show today. And also, if you'll remember at the bottom of your screen, if you have any questions for us, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, and you can go there, type in your question to either me or our guest, Rachel Adams, and we will be happy to, uh, you know, try to answer them on the air today. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today's guest is probably not a stranger to uh, most people. It's Rachel Adams, who is an IICRC approved instructor, and she has been for several years She's also been on several different uh, committees with the IICRC and uh, helped write some standards as well. So uh, without further ado, let's bring on Rachel Adams. Hey, there you are, Rachel. How are you today? I am great. How are you, Kevin? I'm doing good. Thanks for joining me today on the show. Like I said, this has been one of the shows I've been looking forward to for a long time. So um, you're, you've always kind of been uh, somebody I've looked up to in the industry. And so it's an honor to have you here today. Oh, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. So um, let me see. You know when you get old? Rachel, you gotta wear the glasses. And yeah, there you go. So, I, I got a couple of questions for you. Okay. So, I think first of all, tell, uh, tell all the listeners here how you uh, got involved with the IICRC because as you know, this show is kind of like a uh, show to let people know how all of us kind of got involved, how we started volunteering. And, you know, so other people can do the same thing. So I think uh, it'd be a good idea to just let everybody know how you got involved in the I ICRC. Yeah, so it feels like a lifetime ago. And it was kind of a, a roundabout backdoor kind of way. I would have never guessed in a million years I would be an instructor teaching adults mold and sewage. You know, it's just, it just never, <laughs> never convinced me that that's where I would end up. Um, but, you know, Back well, you're in the so day, good at it. <laughs> you're going to find your niche, right? Someone's going to like sewage and mold, right? Right. Um, yeah, back in the day, I was married, and uh, we started a restoration company. It was actually a cleaning service that just eventually branched into a full-service restoration company. Um, and then I started putting together some training courses. Most of them were here in Indiana, which is where I'm from. And, um, like, I would do a presentation for the Indiana Carpet Cleaners Association. And this was back in the day when mold was just starting to become a hot topic. And so they would ask me to come in and, and talk to adjusters. And so I put together a class, and there was only maybe half a dozen people, um, really, in all of North America that was teaching anything about mold. And so mm -hmm. when the IICRC wanted to put together the AMRT, um, I was asked if I wanted to participate. And I always say, you know, when IICRC asks you to participate, that means, will you donate your time? So I got involved with that, and uh, we put together the AMRT. I was an original committee member for that. And then once the, the course was done, uh, then I was asked to participate in writing of the S520 and the S500. So I kind of got involved that way. And, uh, you know, I always tell people IICRC is kind of like this big black hole because once you get in, you just can't quite get out. So, yeah, so I've been in it a long time. Yeah. So what, what keeps you involved other than the black hole? But I mean, is there is has it been beneficial to you over the years? Oh yeah, it's you know I have to say that I am so grateful and I've been so blessed um, to have met so many people. And 
I've had a lot of people that I've that have been, served as mentors for me and, you know, helped me along the way. And so it's very gratifying to know that you can help make a difference in people's lives and their businesses, helping them become successful. And so that's probably been one of the most rewarding parts about being an instructor. Um, and I have to say, in our IICRC family, um, it's, it's a great, great group of people. And, you know, they're always there to help and, and, and support you and, and coach you and mentor you. And so, you know, over the years, I've been very fortunate to, to experience a lot of that with some of the people that I've looked up to. And so to be able to pass that along and help others has been probably the most gratifying part about what I do. Interesting. So do you remember, I guess, kind of along, along those same lines, do you remember who your first instructor was and your first certification? My first certification was WRT. And I okay. believe I took that from Barry Costa, I do believe. So that okay. would have been back in 19, 1989, 1990. Oh, so you're like the youngest uh, ICRC registrant ever. You were like three or something? <laughs> I wish, no. Oh, My body says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <clears throat> so... Um, Speaking of AMRT, I, I took the class, and I took the class from you down in Florida and drove down there. And after the class, I was thinking to myself, why didn't I take this class like decades ago? Because I learned so much in there about containment. And I think if I learned nothing else in that class, how to build proper containment, and make it look good was uh, super important because I just think of all the containment failures I had over the years. Um, but what, what's kind of your, your favorite part of that AMRT class? Um, probably, well, because I'm a, I'm a nerd, right? So I'm a science nerd. So I like the microbiology part of that. You know, you're saying words that are this long and um, talking about diseases and things that uh, health effects from mold exposure and bacteria that we that we find on cat three losses, but um, the containment, the hands on part of it, um, is is a lot of fun, and everybody enjoys that. You know, as an instructor, I've always said that if you can touch it, feel it, see it, do it, you always learn better. And so the containment building part is all the students' favorite as well. Yeah. But it's, it's Challenging course, there's no doubt about it. It's probably the biggest complaint I get is, wow, it's just so much information in such a short period of time. Um, but it's a great class. It definitely is a lot of information, but thankfully I'd you know, been in it for years, so it was a little bit, uh, it wasn't so overwhelming for me. I think uh, right. I definitely know why WRT is the uh, prerequisite for it, because you got to have some it's kind of understanding of the, the basics of it before you go take that course. It's, it's pretty challenging, huh? It is. I agree. Well, yeah. A lot of times, you know, people come to take the course. Many times they've never built any kind of containment. So I'm trying to describe okay. what we're going to build and everything. They're kind of looking at me like a deer in headlights. I was like, we're going to do what? And it's kind of hard to explain it on a dry erase board. But once we put them out into the, you know, the, the classroom and they're actually constructing their own containments, it becomes like a contest to see who can build the best looking containment. And I'm pretty much a containment snob. So, you know, I make sure everybody the containment looks professional. So if you're out in the real world and you're building containment and it looks like a three-year-old built it, that's a problem. So containment is just like your equipment. It's one of the, the, the parts about being a professional because that's what people are going to look at. That's what your customers are going to look at. I know. And to me, I, I guess I never thought of it like that until I uh, took your class, even so much as the color of the tape and make it color coordinated. And I mean, it just, it kind of took it to a next level for me. And so, uh, like I said, I wish I would have taken it decades earlier. I probably uh, would have had a lot more cool pictures of containment. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, so, um, you helped develop the AMRT course, is that yeah. correct? Right. So talk a little bit about that and what was the, the thinking in that? And I know you're still involved in it. It's still changing. We're still talking about, you know, online, uh, you know, streaming of exams and 
uh, streaming of classes and all that nowadays. So kind of take us a little bit through there, how it began and, and what all uh, is happening with it now. Well, back in the day, we, well, we started the development of it around 2000, 1999, 2000. And um, back then, we, would, we were part of a committee that had probably 25 people on it. It was huge. And uh, we would have three to four times a year that we would have to travel to different places and actually meet and work on the actual course. And, you know, back in the, I mean, now we can do go-to meetings, but, you know, back in the day, it was, we all traveled on our own time, on our own dime, and we paid our own ways to be there and volunteer our time. So it was pretty intense. And we had all kinds of, you know, professionals, everything from the HVAC world to the water damage world to scientists, you know, doctors and uh, lawyers. We had everybody you could possibly imagine serving on that committee. So it took us several years to bring that to, uh, to close and uh, come up with uh, a really good course. And at the time, there really wasn't any other training that was really available outside of, well, now it's ACAC, but back then it was the American Indoor Air Quality Council. And so they were really the only ones doing any kind of courses. And so you know, now we've moved forward, you know, 15 years or so, 20 years. And now we're looking at expanding into doing live streaming classes. We're looking at maybe developing more of a collegiate style of learning um, and taking classes like this. And can we put them online and do self-paced learning? So it's, it's continually changing. You know, one thing about mold, which is a little bit different about water, is you know, the fundamentals of mold remediation is pretty much the same. Right. There's really nothing that's, that's changing on that front other than different ways and different materials that have been developed to build different types of containment. But, you know, water, that science is constantly changing. Equipment is changing. So you know, staying up with all the differences that are you know, being now included in our standards, it's, it's, it's a full-time job. Right, right. So I know you've been in the field a bunch. Uh, what's one of your funniest memories of being in the field? Hmm. probably the time that I had a worker that was in a crawl space. It was here in Indiana and uh, he was a new, new person, new employee and did not know that he was claustrophobic. Oh. And so we put him in his, he gets you know, geared up in his PPE and he goes into this crawl space. He gets to the opposite side of the crawl space and it's, it's dark. Obviously he's got a flashlight and he drops his flashlight and he can't find it. And also little did I know, he had a phobia of spiders. And so the spiders were so bad in this crawl space, you could actually hear them scurry across the gravel. And so when he lost his flashlight, he basically lost his stuff. And um, all, <laughs> was all this banging and clanging and yelling, and he comes out, he just busts out of the opening, and his mask was ripped off, his suit was shredded. He had ducting. He actually took out all of the ducting, the metal ducting, he was hanging on his suit. He was bleeding and cut up. And I'm just looking at him like, what is wrong? And he couldn't even speak because he was so terrified. I mean, that's like a pretty funny story, but it's funny at the time. <laughs> okay. So while you're telling that, I'll tell you, I'll tell you mine. Okay. It actually involves my dad. So my dad and I are on a water damage job one day. This lady's house, it was the second time we had dried her house. And we go... Uh, in there and she had water that came down an exterior wall and there was a light switch on the wall. And I walked by the wall and I could hear electricity like going through the sheetrock. And so I said, I turned around and I, I, my dad's there and I said, hey dad, don't touch this. I'm gonna go to the breaker box and turn this off. I turn around and I take two steps and I hear, ah! and I'm like, I turn around and my dad's like shaking his hand. I'm like, you touched it, didn't you? I just told you not to touch it. Now go over there and sit down and don't touch it again. So that was, that was kind of my little story. It's about my dad. So uh, him and I worked together for a year. So I got tons of dad stories. So but anyway, that, that was one I I'll say that. never forget. So. Yeah, my kids could probably say the same thing because they my boys uh, <laughs> by default, you know, when they were like eight years old, they're cleaning equipment, right? So right. they've been in the industry the whole time and they uh, are both still working in it. So. Good. Good. Daughter, she was no part of it. She's like, no, I'll just sit here. I'll have a desk job. Thank you. I'm not going in a crossword. <laughs> so I can't blame her. Can't blame her. 
Hey, uh, I think we got a prize to give away. You want to do a trivia question real quick and see if we have sure. anybody online that may know uh, the answer to the trivia question? We got a messenger bag, I believe, to give away, but the, the question is, what is the prerequisite for AMRT? The IICRC messenger bag is lightweight and can hold all of your items for your computer. Take it between your home and office or when you travel. All right, we have a winner, Marcus. Congratulations, Marcus. You are the winner of the messenger bag. I guess Marcus was listening earlier whenever I spilled the beans on that one, huh? So, I got uh, another question for you, Rachel, real quick. Um, have you been doing any teaching since the COVID-19 hit? And because I think you're doing something different now. I know you've gotten married recently. There's a whole lot of things going on in, in your life, but are you, are you still teaching? I am, but I've kind of dialed it back. So I was, I've been self-employed, you know, for 30 years. And when um, I got offered a great position with the Ramsco as an instructor, and I was going to be, probably one of their only in-house instructors, at least in the U.S. They have uh, another person that does training for them up in their Montreal uh, flood house. But uh, they gave me a great offer. I moved to Florida and um, was still doing a lot of travel. I mean, one year, I think I was on the road, including weekends, uh, like 44 weeks out of the year. There was only 52. So <clears throat> the travel was pretty intense. Um, and then last June, so I've been with my new position for about a year now, um, I joined the corporate accounts team. And I have a great team of people that I work with. So I'm doing more in the management of some of our larger accounts. But I do get to do some training with those accounts. So, for example, if we have a large account that, you know, purchases a, a, a huge order for equipment or supplies, sometimes we can build in some training just as a way to say, you know, thank you and give them some value added benefits. So I am still doing training, but just not as much. And I get text messages and emails every week. When are you going to teach your next class? Where are you going to be located? We really want to come take your class. And it's like, oh, just not really doing the, you know, the open enrollment classes anymore. So I got gotcha. you. It's, it's hard to adjust, but I don't miss the travel. Okay. Have you done any live stream classes? I have not. Being with corporate okay. accounts, it's, you know, most of what I'm doing is going to be in-person classes or usually private classes. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. It's just curious because I know a lot of the instructors are loving not having to travel right now doing the, the oh, yeah. classes. We do have some rare, raring to go and get back out there and travel, but, uh, but some of them are really enjoying it. Hey, so what other uh, classes do you teach for uh, I ICRC? What well, are I teach the for? public safety technician, and that's a class that's always been difficult to find. We really haven't had a lot of instructors uh, that were willing or wanted to teach it. And then, you know, it's, and it's probably one of the most important classes I think I, I seriously offers, um, mainly yeah. because it's one way to keep you out of trouble. I always say, you know, no one really gets excited about OSHA until either somebody shows, you know, until they get injured or there's a fatality, or until OSHA shows up at your door, and then everybody gets excited. You know, but then it's too late to, to try to na navigate through the, the minefield of the different regulations. So, I think the health and safety class is a great course. Um, I also teach the 10 and 30 hour general industry health and safety for OSHA as an outreach trainer, um, teach WRT and ASD, um, and that's about it. So most of okay. the rest of the companies are courses. You know, the HST class is uh, one of the classes that has really benefited from uh, online streaming. It's uh, one that's, that's kind of, taken off of, I think we've had more uh, HST classes, you know, since COVID started than we had all last year. So it's, yeah. it's definitely taken off and been able to benefit from that. So, uh, you know. And that's one of the courses that's required to yeah. 
Okay, your master water. Uh, yeah. Master water yeah. Story. yeah, so that's a class that everyone needs to take, but you know, typically that's the one they put off to the very last minute because no one gets excited again about safety, but it's actually a really good class. We build a lot of um, you know, hands-on type of group activities, and we, and we really make it more specific. You know, I always ask people, how many of you have ever taken an OSHA class? And everybody raises their hand, and you know, my next question is, how much of did you have to learn or cover that has nothing to do with what our industry does? And that's probably about 80%. So right. what we did is we took the health and safety course and we can still issue an OSHA general industry card to the attendees, but we've taken the required time that OSHA says you have to spend on each specific topic. And we've been able to adjust it to be specific to what we do. So you're not learning about forklift operations. You're not learning about brazing and welding. You're learning about things that really apply to our, our everyday businesses. Yeah, most definitely. I've, I've taken that class as well. And it's, it's definitely uh, a class that an, another one I probably should have taken years ago. It's just going to keep you out of trouble, keep your workers safe, you know, uh, keep your job site safe for people. So uh, it's, it's really important. But um, hey, I think um, we had a poll question today, Rachel. Yeah, so we'll see if you know the answer to this. Okay, I'm hoping so. <laughs> I know, right? Fingers crossed. What percentage of IICRC registrants have the AMRT certification? And I guess we're also wondering how many of you actually currently hold the AMRT certification? So we got, uh, looks like folks rolling in here. We'll give it a minute. Mm. You got choices of 18%, 35%, or 10%. Well, 67% said they have it. That's awesome. Yeah, no. Good. The answer is actually 18% currently have the AMRT certification. So I kind of thought it would have been a little higher. One of those yeah. courses that, you know, even though we talk about containment and mold, that's a class that can apply to water damage. I mean, you know, building drying chambers. Mm -hmm. So it can really be applied across the board as far as what your everyday practices are in the field. Right, right. Most definitely. Hey, on the lighter note, I got a, a question for you, uh, a food question. Ooh. I see... You are all over Facebook with our friend uh, James Toll, and you have a current little uh, challenge running. I also saw that. I think he politely called you a chicken or something when he <laughs> made spammy Rachel out of like a ball of spam with uh, pasta noodles. And I don't know, I think you had olive eyes or something. I don't know what it was, but he was calling it spammy Rachel. So yeah. tell, us, tell us a little bit about this. How did this all happen? Well, you know, during COVID and everything was shut down, and we're all under quarantine. So I was trying to find something to do with my time. And uh, <laughs> I've always loved to cook, right? So I always post pictures of my food, um, especially for my kids. They're like, you know, Mom, we need this recipe. Can you give us this recipe? And um, so I decided just to go on Facebook and create a cooking page. Like, I could just post pictures and my recipes and Anyway, so James Toll decided that he wanted to challenge me and make this like a contest. And so we'd have to come up with different unique, you know, ingredients. Although he, he tries to like bully me into using the ingredients he wants to cook with. So he calls me chicken and he actually created, a, well, a, I guess an icon in my honor. He took a raw chicken and he, a whole chicken. He set it up on a can. So it actually looks like it's sitting there. He, and, and spam was the ingredient he wanted to have the challenge with. I take a big ball of spam and be my head, put some on top of the chicken, uses pasta noodles for the hair. It actually looked, pretty, looked a lot like me, I have to say. Did a good job. <laughs> With olives for eyes, and uh, yeah, so it was Spammy Rachel. Um, hey. Spammy yeah, Rachel. Was... So I call him Scaredy Cat James. Actually, Scaredy Cat Jimmy. And he, I don't think he likes Jimmy, so yeah, I came up with that one. <laughs> Every time, you know, we, and his plating skills, I had to, you know, I'm always giving him hit, hints and tips because he just really struggles in those areas, you know, but right. I call him Jimmy, the wannabe chef, but yeah, you know, it's yeah. ongoing challenge though. It just, it's fun. 
picking fun at each other. Right, right. He thinks plating is having green broccoli. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, that's great. Uh, yeah. So, uh, anyway, um, yeah, it's been fun to watch that on Facebook. You and him kind of um, – Go at it, and and I'm glad that you let them win a couple of times. I know that because you, yeah, you know I call them mercy there. wins because yeah, mercy wins. Right, they mercy wins. Right. And he won't play. He won't play anymore. So you gotta let him win sometimes. So but then he goes down you know, and he cheats and buys a whole goat. It's like who does that? Our whole land, <laughs> kind of was. Yeah, yeah. So you know, Robert Petty John calls him Chef James Toll. So if if he's gonna be Chef James Toll, then I think you are to be Master Chef Rachel. I like that. Okay, I like that. We'll go with that. Yeah, you are now Master Chef. So, James. Let's see. I think we got we got time for one more trivia question before we wrap this up today. So. Um, I think we have a wireless mouse that uh, will be the the prize, but the trivia question is, what does the acronym ASD stand for? This ergonomic wireless mouse is convenient and easy to travel with. Its unique design allows you to use it left or right-handed. Right. Going, I know it. I know the answer. I know. Yeah, you want to tell us what the answer is? Applied structural dry. <laughs> Applied structural dry. There you go. So we do have a winner, Tina. So congratulations, Tina. Woo-hoo. All right, Rachel, before I wrap this up, anything else that you want to Tell us about that's happening in your world or ICRC related. Um, well, the awards that are going to be coming up in October, I hope everybody will be able to attend that. It's going to be a lot of fun, and you can tell more about that, but that's coming up, and that's that's always exciting. You know, in the past, we've only been able to share that with just between instructors, and now we can invite everybody. So I think it's right. going to be fun. It will be fun. So uh, what you're referring to is we are going to have an uh, awards night on October the 3rd. Every year at our annual instructors meeting, we have we give out awards to the instructors. But like Rachel said, always before, it's only been for the instructors. Nobody else has ever seen it. We never publicized it anywhere, anything like that. But this year, we're inviting everybody to uh, join uh, join us this evening on the evening of October third, and uh, we'll have we'll be inducting the first inductees of the Hall of Fame, and this is going to be a, a cool deal. We started in June with nominations for the Hall of Fame, and you can now go onto the IICRC website and find a list of all the people that were nominated. And there was uh, quite some stringent criteria to be nominated. You had to be a, be a registrant for at least 25 years and you know be involved in, in the Institute. And the board of directors and the shareholders will vote on this and we'll have our inductees announced on October the 3rd at the the awards night. There's also currently a People's Choice Award that is out there now that you can vote on. And this is for your favorite instructor or IICRC approved instructor. So you can actually go there uh, to, uh, you can find out on social media right now and I believe Monday it's gonna be up on our website and you can vote for uh, your favorite IICRC approved instructor. So that's pretty exciting. We're gonna have a big, big event on October 3rd and hope everybody joins us. 
So, uh, Rachel, again, I want to tell you, thank you for being on the show today. It was an honor to have you here. And I, I really appreciate the time of uh, getting to catch up with you and learn a little bit more about uh, why you got involved. So thanks again. It's an honor to be here. So thank you. All right. So I didn't mean to forget about your applause there, Rachel. We got, we got to make sure we get that in. <laughs> but um, all right. So until next month. Uh, well, wait. Uh, my email address, if you did not get your question answered, today and you would like to email me, my email is kpearson at iicrcnet.org. Feel free to email me and I believe that is it for this month. So until next month, I am the chairman of the IICRC Board of Directors, Kevin Pearson. Thanks for joining us.